Good morning, good morning, good morning. I bought every single curriculum or reviewed every single curriculum I possibly could. So today I'm doing kind of awards. I'm gonna introduce you to a million different curriculums for a million different reasons as to why I like them and what I would recommend them for. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you three that I do not recommend. Also, I'm going to do a video this week, hopefully, I plan to of my favorite products. So out of all the products I show you, because every day I show you some products, my favorite products. But now let's get to advice, advice. The Bluebird Farm House, I was watching her video the other day and she had, and she uses a journal with her children. So each one of her children has a diary. No other children can look at it. It's just between her and them. And what it is is, so they write, you know, their feelings or whatever's going on that day. And she reads it or her husband reads it and it's just between them. And then she can write back and leave little notes. So I just think that is super cool, super cool, super cool. Now, let's see. So that's my advice today, products. Today, first of all, this will go in my products of the year because it's Snap Circuits. I told my little list, I was like, okay, build me something from Snap Circuits. And because he wanted to go do something else, he took like two seconds. But he's been using them since he was four. And they're really easy to use. They're pretty durable, pretty durable. We've lost a couple pieces, I'm not gonna lie. But they are pretty durable. I have three boys. Like I'm not gonna lose something or break something. Come on, come on. Okay, next up we got crossword puzzles. I, this is a book I love because I love crossword puzzles. Love doing these with my kids, just because it's like, it's just between me and whoever I'm doing it with, just an activity we can do, it's kind of fun. We do it as like a team. Yeah, that's about it. it. Also, they practice their letters too. When they were really little, we would do it and they would practice their letters. Like, okay, you do the first letter, I'll do the rest of the letters, things like that. So kind of a low stress way to practice some stuff. Next is this game that I just tried out today. It's called The Postman. The Postman, it's an observation game. So you set up this board here, you set up the board, the city, any way you want. And then you each get a bunch of letters and then you flip over a card. And whoever finds that house first gets to put their letter in. And whoever gets rid of their letters first wins. And there's variations for as you get older. So I like that. So those are my products of the day. So let's get to the main event, the main event. Oh, so excited. Now I try to keep everything in areas, but what I couldn't keep in areas was language arts because you know that language arts is comprised of like six different things, right? Grammar and writing, handwriting or cursive or and like just on and on and on. Literacy, learning to read. So there's just a ton of things that go into language arts. So they are, it's all over the place. It's all over the place, kind of like my life some days. All right. So if you are self-directed, the best self-directed curriculum, as in you have an independent child or you want an independent child who doesn't really care for school and just wants to get stuff done, I know, I got one of those, fun schooling. Fun schooling books, I didn't understand at first how they were and I had a bunch of videos where they were my products of the day and I showed you through them. But essentially what it is, is it's like, okay, find five books or write down five topics you wanna to learn about science. Okay, go to the library this week, that's your challenge and pick up three books for the first topic that you mentioned. Okay, so it's, and you write down, you fill it out. You do like a page a day and it does go through all the different areas. I love that concept. It's also supposed to be written for kids who have dyslexia, they're able to read it easier. Next up, if you have struggling readers, of course we know all about reading. Like yeah, all about reading is awesome. It's great. It can be a little dry. I found it a little dry, so that's why I switched off of it, but it's still good. Like it's a good, it's a good program, absolutely. But even, Better than that, if you have like really, like something's going on inside motor planning wise, you don't know what, but they're really struggling. You can do the Diana Croft, no, Diana Craft curriculum. I have it here and I have it, like it's packed. So I haven't unpacked it yet. There's a few curriculums I haven't unpacked yet. And the Diana Craft, which is like the right brain type of curriculum where she helps you with math, she helps you. And one of the things she does with language arts is she adds pictures to her sight words, which is hands down my favorite way to teach sight words. And it's so much easier if you're like, okay, this is soon. This isn't from Diana Craft. This is just side note what I do. Soon, and then on the back it's soon. Okay, so eventually, I'm telling you within like a week, these kids can get these sight words in their head. It was, it's pretty impressive to watch even my littlest do it. So for a language arts, my favorite for easiness would be sight words with this, especially some children have trouble with phonics. Some children have trouble with phonics. I have a child that he has trouble with phonics. And this goes along with my favorite easiest, easiest way to teach 
reading and that's what I did for one of them. I'm not gonna do it for the other one, but just the one that had issues, that's what I did it with. And it's basically, it's this, it's the I Can Read It series. And what you do is, it's like 10 bucks a book unless you go on Amazon, don't go on Amazon for these books. And then, so, okay, so we're learning at words. Those are the first. And then it's got a corresponding book where you open it up and you read all the stories. Now they do have words that aren't listed here, like the and at, but that's where your flashcards come in. So my son was able to just, after a couple times of review here, able to read because we had done the flashcards for the sight words and paired that with that. So that is my, that's the easiest way I found to teach them. And again, you know I buy a bunch of curriculums. So the best, remember there's no order. It's just like the best for this, the best for that, the best for this, the best for that. Best structured community. And I don't mean like a co-op. I mean like a structured community where you're all doing the same stuff would be classical conversations. You can do it without the community, but in the community, you all get together and you do like, because everyone's working on the same cycle that week. And classical conversations has a big component of memorization of kids. So I'm not talking like Bible verses per se, I'm talking everything from science to Latin, to math, to this, to that, to this, to that. Some of their flashcards, even though it's Christian, their flashcards are not Christian. So, and they are some of the best science flashcards that I've ever seen. They, to be honest, they might be the only science flashcards I've ever seen, but I've seen some others or thought of some others or, there's a couple deck of card ones I've had, but those are hands down the best and that's gonna be my products of the year. But now keep in mind that with the structured community is A, it's gonna cost you a bit more money just if you join the community because you got to pay your community dues because those community dues go and help pay for the people that run the community. But now your community will make or break. Like if you have a really good community from what I understand, because I've done classical conversations, but I have never done community. Like I have the curriculum because you know I bought every curriculum. So I bought classical conversations, which can be done with or without community. And with the community, it could make or break it if you have a good community, if you don't, because there's people, right? It's people getting together. It's like if you have a baseball team or a hockey team, the parents on there, sometimes everyone gets along and it's, it's cohesive and it's cool. And sometimes there's, they don't. Best free language arts would be the good and the beautiful. That is Christian. Best free secular one of learning how to read would be treasure chest. It's called treasure chest. It's or treasure hunters, treasure hunters. I always get that wrong. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool as well. Okay. And it's fully downloadable PDF. So I have a video where I do 14 free curriculums. So even though I give you the website where you can find the free curriculums, I still talk about more that are mentioned that are not mentioned on the website because whatever. Anyway, the point is, is that I only mention curriculums that are PDF downloadable that you can print off because there's a lot of like, you can go Ambleside, you can go easy peasy and they're good curriculums. It's just a lot of times you want something printed off in front of your face <laughs> that you can be like, okay, this is what we're working on today. And so that's what I include for anything free. It's gotta be easy, accessible and printable offable. Printable offable, which side note, if you have an Epson, again, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not sponsored by anyone at this particular time. And I won't be sponsored for curriculum, but I will be sponsored for if Epson wants to call me up and say, hey, you can have another ink tank for free because all the times you mentioned it, I'm gonna say, okay, but I, they haven't yet. So it's 200 bucks because you get an older style one, you don't need the newest, the, it, it doesn't change that much. So you pay $200 off of Amazon, you get 7,800 of pages of colors for $40 of ink. It's amazing, it's amazing. It's called an ink tank, not an ink jet. Mm -mm ink tank. Okay. Next up, free printable curriculum would be core knowledge. Core knowledge, although they're math, they don't really have math for younger kids. Um, they have math, I think, I want to say starting grade three, like three, four, five, six, or something like that around there. But beyond that, they have the best free downloadable printable curriculums. They, well, what's it? It was designed because it's designed for kids in school because they may miss something in school or parents may have to do extra work, whatever. This way, it's all together, it's all downloadable by grade. Okay, so let's talk history. So free history, not free history, the best history curriculums, because remember, I bought them all. Speaking of which, I have an amazing history product to show you that I haven't shown you before on my uh, products of the year. It's so cool, like it's so cool. Speaking of which, let me put this over there so I don't forget and let me slide this over there so I don't forget to add that in. I know, I have piles. I have piles in my room of past videos and future videos. 
So I gotta do some housework. Like that is evident. All right. So best history is definitely secular. So I got a best Christian, a best secular. If you want like not a lot of effort put into it as in open and go, the story of the story of the world for Christian and the the history quest for secular. Secular it is very very secular so it's not like it's open to everybody. It's it's meant for secular so I don't recommend it for everybody, right? Because it's it's not. Some some curriculums that don't mention God are just open to anyone like think math. Most maths, it doesn't matter who created them, someone who's Christian, someone who's secular, it doesn't matter. Most maths there's not really a lot of God in it. There's a couple exceptions to that, but generally, speaking of which I'm not talking about maths today. <laughs> I'm talking about maths, but I'm not talking about maths because I have a whole video where I went into a bunch of different of my favorite math curriculums. And then of course DIY, where you pick up one of these books over here on the history thing I talked about. You pick up a book, you go through, you pick a week, and you do it yourself. DIY, I think both of those are sufficient, more than sufficient for a history. Curriculum, if you wanna know my favorite American history curriculum, because I bought Sunlight, I bought, I mean, I bought whatever history curriculum I get my hands on, not grass. Not grass I found a little dry. Sunlight was okay. It was, it had some really good elements to it. But my favorite was the Abeka's. Abeka was my favorite. Okay, so let's go to art. My art curriculums, what I have done is I have separate, because I have an artist in the family and I have one that likes to draw. So for drawing, we're doing an actual full-on drawing curriculum, but this is what I propose. I propose, and maybe I'm not arty, so that intimidated me. Okay, so that may be for an artist's family and just not for me. A lot of curriculums I don't like, they're not bad curriculums, just for me. I'll tell you why, like that I'm not pro that curriculum. So the art is I got a series of DVDs that are super cool, um, that are not available, but I'm gonna show you different art projects through them. So you're gonna have a chance to see them. Drawing, I would do drawing with Mona. Drawing with Mona is like a full on art curriculum, full on. So it is like a drawing curriculum. Drama, drama, drama. So back to art. So what I also like, because I want an art curriculum that introduced a bunch of different artists. So what I chose was introduction to art at first, but then we got through that book pretty quickly. So the art encyclopedia. Now again, you can keep these books and go back and reference them. The art encyclopedia for children is by DK and it's, it's just a big thick book and it goes through all the different areas. And so it's something you can pull out like breakfast and be like, okay, I call them breakfast books, but I guess morning baskets, the same thing. And you're like, okay, well, let's talk about the Mona Lisa today. Let's talk about, you know, impressionism. So it's just got a bunch of different areas for a bunch of different age levels. So you can read different texts based on their ages. So that to me, makes kind of a comprehensive art curriculum at this age. But again, another thing, one of the products I love that I have in the products of the year is just getting different products for them to try to see what medium they love. Do they love painting? Do they love drawing? Do they love working with clay? Like what do they love? So next up on the list, we got literature. So literature, we got Torchlight and five in a row. I thought I had a five in a row here. Torchlight is definitely secular and is hands down, hands down my favorite, at least for the grade one year that I purchased it, hands down my favorite literacy program. What I love about it are their book selections. Their book selections are out of this world. However, you can get their book list for free. They do have additional things, like they got journal entries written because um, it's about history and archeology span is this one. And then they have your decoding things. They, they have a decoder and you're decoding things. And it's not expensive. It's like, I want to say $20, but it might be a bit more, maybe $40 for the year. And then they have, you're building a civilization, but be, it's definitely uh, secular because it's like, what type of gods are your people praying to? Cause this was back a long time ago during your civilization that you're building up. Do you live near a river? And how are you utilizing that river? So I just think it, it just had such a creative level, element to it that hands down is my favorite one. Another favorite one is five in a row. This uses more classical books. So if you're a Christian, I think you'd be more comfortable with this because it doesn't have anything overtly secular or, or Christian in it that I've read through it. And a lot of Christians do use it. And it deals with classic books, which are older books. So still good books, um, but older ones from like 1939, like Virginia, I forget her name, but she's got some good books out there. And what it does is, is so you choose one book for the week, you read it every single day. And then during that time, you break down different, you have different components, different activities that you choose for that week. You can do it all the way up to ages nine. And it's like, okay, so the book that, so the story we did was one of the stories 
with steam shovels that I remember off the top of my head. So we're reading about Mike and his steam shovel. I think that's what it's called. And so he, now we're studying steam. So if you wanna choose the science, comp the science component that week or the science activity, we're gonna study steam. And then if you wanna do the art component, we're gonna draw trees on the hill. Or so it has different components and you choose them that you want, but it covers all different areas of, you know, art, math, science. So it covers all these different areas. It's not a comprehensive all-in-one curriculum, in my opinion, it's not, not even close, but it just, it's almost like mini study units you're doing based on the book. And I, I just think, I think that's pretty good. And I think you can get them free right now. Someone told me on Scribd, 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 I don't know how you say it, S-C-R-I-B-D. Um, you can get a couple different years for it, a couple different volumes of it. And one volume is used essentially a year. Okay, so let's talk about easy, gentle, all-in-one curriculums. Check this out. It is beautiful. It is easy. Which one's the first one? Little Hearts for His Glory. This one is the first one. So look at this. This is definitely a Christian curriculum. Take a look inside. Oh my gosh. The simpleness of this, like the way they have laid it out for you. And it covers, this is for the five to seven year olds. Unit 11, day two, the birth of Jesus. And then it's always got language arts and math. I mean, it's just, it's a super simple, gentle, thorough curriculum. I think it's great. I think it's great. And it comes with, when you order it, it comes with all the books as well. Um, so it may not be the cheapest, but I mean, it's just an, it's an awesome curriculum. Oh, that's one of my favorite products for next video. Okay. So, and then this is the next step up for ages six to eight. And again, look at that. Look at how it's just, I mean, to me, it just makes it so easy to read. Like it just looks so pleasant on my eyes. It's not a ton of words all bundled together. It's like, it's laid out pretty easy. And I just, I think that's great. I think that's great. Oh, another one of my favorite products. Okay, so let's talk nature programs. So we have quite a scope of nature programs. And I will tell you, if you are secular, I recommend Blossom and Root. They got a nature program for young kids and it's, it's pretty cool. It's not only that, but when you buy, it, it's like $20. You get the nature and you get the life sciences and it's for young kids. You can do it anywhere. You know, a lot of these programs, because you don't know what level your kid's at, you know, like K through two, right? Like anywhere along there. And it has a living sciences unit where it's a space adventure. So you're going to space on an adventure and you're telling these aliens what your home planet is like. And so you're explaining different things like about your planet. And so you're studying life sciences that way. And then it's got the nature component where you go outdoors and you're following animal tracks, but you don't need any additional materials for it. It was created by a homeschool mom. You don't need any additional materials for it. If you wanted, that is secular. If you wanted a Christian curriculum that is gentle, a gentle nature one, Rabbit's Trail. Rabbit's Trail is gentle and it also has the verses and like verses from the Bible that's tied in to your curriculum lessons. You don't need that many books. You only have to purchase like two additional books generally for their science curriculums. Not only that, but then it gives you a list of other books if you want them. Same with Blossom if you want them. Now, if you want a really intensive nature program, like you want an intensive, intensive nature program. It doesn't mean it's not gentle, but intensive. Then if you are looking for a Christian one, you can go the gentle, the gentle and classical. It's very intensive nature wise, but it, I mean, if that's what you're looking for, hey, go for it. If that's what you guys are into and that's what you love, absolutely. And that one is Christian. If you are looking for an alternative that is very, it's, it's just a very good curriculum and it is also in depth. Those, these two I'm talking about right now are more expensive than the Rabbit's Trail and the Blossom and Root. These two, you gotta have a bit more money for, but if you want one that looking for where, it, I think they call it Secretarian, where it's open to everybody, is the Beautiful Feet. The Beautiful Feet Seasons of Field. I did a whole video on it and you'll see into some lessons and some cool things about it. I mean, it is super cool. It's super cool. You get 72 lessons. It's about 200 bucks. You get 72 lessons. And I mean, they are, it was created by a woman who, two women, and one who has like her PhD, she was on her way to her PhD at the time. I don't know what she's got right now for um, education, I think. And the other one um, was a homeschool mom of 10 and started creating all these units based on like biology, created real life biology units. So together they created this beautiful curriculum called Seasons of Field 
from Beautiful Feet. And what I love about it too is you do not have to go outdoors to use it. Like it's a nature curriculum, but there's a lot of nature elements that you can get from the grocery store, you can get from outside and bring in and do it in your house, which I think is, I think is super cool. And it's a literacy program at well. It has a bunch of books that go along with it. Okay, next up, geography, geography. So you have a couple different, ah, you have a couple different options for geography, but the winner here would be Guest Hollow for the price and because how thorough it is. So Guest Hollow's geography, you can get it, the junior one, but also if you bundle it with the high school one as well. So we're talking K through six, you got one level and you can go through these programs again and again. So it's not like, hey, this is it, you go through it. No, you go through it because you learn different stuff the next time you go around, right? It's like history, like history. When you cover ancient history, you know, medieval history, modern history, whatever. You go through them again and again. It's not like this is the only time in their life that you've gone through them because you cover them at a different level. You get different books for that level, right? So geography, guest hollow, and then you can also do a DIY free one where you get some maps and you can, I mean, it just depends what you want at a geography program. If you want a really thorough one, then you're gonna go guest hollow because it covers everything you can think of regarding Geography. Now, if you just want to do, like, say, you know, your kids are young and maybe you just, or, you know, it's your summer thing and you don't want to go that in depth. Maybe you're just like, hey, let's just cover a bunch of different continents. Well, then you can go to Core Knowledge, download like their kindergarten and grade one geography units and just go through that. The only thing I don't recommend, it's not that they're not good, is the Evan Moore. It's not that they're not good, they're great. But like year after year after year, how much map skills do your kids need? You don't necessarily need the pre-K and then the kindergarten and then the grade one and then the grade two geography unit from DK. You don't really need that. Um, I just don't think so. I think it's a lot of added time as well. I just don't think geography is something that necessarily needs to be taught like every single year in depth. But that's just me. That's just me. And you know, geography falls into sometimes history as well. It falls into other things. Okay, science. Let's talk year to year building blocks of science. This is the teacher's manual for building blocks of science. What I love is look how easy it is. It's very, the curriculum itself, like look at that. This is the teacher's manual. It's not overwhelming. It's not overwhelming. It's got the things highlighted, what I'm supposed to say. And what's good about it is, is that another part of this? This is the laboratory notebook for the building blocks of science. The actual text I've showed you many times. So this is the laboratory book. You don't necessarily need the laboratory book. It's not that cheap. You're looking at $168 per year. Um, but what it covers, I mean, it's very thorough, but it's, there's no busy work. So like first year, for example, and it deals with all the five different areas of science. But the first year, for example, what you're covering is you're covering the history of science and you're covering the scientific method. So I just think it is good. Um, the other thing I mentioned, I remember I have a science video where I go through a bunch of different science curriculums and I tell you my favorite science curriculums, or I give you a view of all the science curriculums that I have seen and reviewed and have access to. Another option is that I like, if you want science condensed, which is what I decided to go with, which is from this same company, but it is the focus on series. So say your child's a little older right now and you're like, Hey, I want to make sure we got the basics of chemistry, biology like all the, the five different areas, astronomy, physics, um, and uh, astrology, astronomy, down, well then you can get the, you can get the focus on series. They go on for young kids, they go on for older kids. So K through four, this is all you have to teach them would be these focus on, just to make sure they got those elements down pat. And then you use study units, you use like rabbit's trail, you use the different stuff. Now I will say, I. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mention God in here, so I'll just throw it in the secular pile. But you know, again, like math, don't let that intimidate you or keep you away. Because I've also started using one that is very good, which is my, oh, let me do favorite, before I get to that one, favorite family group science would be Apologia. I think it's awesome. I have Apologia right around here somewhere. Here, let me show you the focus on. So this would be the physics. So it's got, so it just goes right into, so it covers some very important topics, just the basics. So this is the focus on series. So kind of everything you need to know, the history of physics, modern physics, everyday physics in summary. Okay, so look at the lessons, the way they're done. This is the student notebook that you read. So chapter two, physics toolbox. So basic physics tools, advanced physics tools. So they teach complex, they teach complex concepts to little children, which is why 
some of these books here, let me put them over there. You don't need these stack of books that I talk about all the time. Oh shoot. If you got that, I put that in my best products pile, which is now not a pile. Now a little hill is the mess. Um, but so it's got a brief history of physics and then it goes on to just a bunch of different things, but see how it's written? Like it's not overwhelming. It's got interesting pictures. I just, I could not like it more. I could not like it more. And th like, this is the teacher's manual that comes with it. So this is the physics one, but again, it's the same interesting kind of teacher's manual that comes with it. Okay. And then this is the geology. Let me show you quickly into the geology. Do, do, do. I'm just going to show you some random pages because I can't go into all of them. Remember, it talks about atoms. So we're getting to the nitty gritty here of stuff you need to know um, regarding science. Okay, so best family science I think is the Apologia. I think it's not badly priced. And I love that it does the concept of immersion, of immersion, like studies show, according to the Apologia and what I read in it, studies show that immersing a child in it, and I believe it goes up to grade six, is just a lot better than a bit at a time, a bit at a time, a bit at a time. And again, if you, but so that's kind of like, like with apology, it's like you're getting a study unit, but not a study unit, full curriculum. Like you're studying zoology and zoology too, which is all like the water animals and stuff like that. Um, that is Christian um, and it's very God focused. So if you are secular, you won't want to do that. And you also won't want to do this one. This is, this is such a gentle introduction to God and science. I love it. I'm doing it with my kids right now. And it is a Becca. You go through it very easily. A Becca. I'll talk about Becca later, but essentially it's really pricey. The entire program, the entire, like you're like all grade one, all grade two, all grade three. I mean, it's mother effing pricey. Like you're talking, you know, a thousand dollars or ideally if you get another teacher to teach it, $1,500. And that was like for their kindergarten program. So I'm not saying it's not a good program. I'm just saying it's what Christian schools use to teach your kids. So it's real pricey, but they got some elements in it that are brilliant. And so they're on my list of favorites here. And this is one of them. It is an absolute gentle introduction to God and your body about how he made your ears, about how thumbprints are made differently, about what pigment is in your hair and what your nostrils do and just how you take care of them and things like that. So here, let me give you a little video tour in it. This is taking care of my ears. These are things I don't put in my ears. This is my nose smelling and breathing about my nostrils and how there's little hairs in my nose and how God made everything so special. So see, this is the grade one, but I'm even doing it with my kindergarten. At once we just read a bit a day. You don't even need to, you don't, I don't think there's a teacher's manual that goes with it. I did not see it in the program I ordered and you don't need one. And there's a couple experiments, but not too many. And they're very easy to do. Like you hold up a piece of paper and you blow on it or something just to discuss air. So very simple, very easy. But basically what you're doing is you're introducing, you're talking about how to care for yourself, how God wants you to care for yourself, and you're introducing God in a gentle, friendly, not a lot of Bible verses way. So that's what I like. Very gentle, very simple. So I just, I recommend that book. That is my favorite for a gentle science introduction to God. See, I like made up these categories. We know, I made them up. Next is my favorite science readers. Oh, I threw them over there. They are the Gravitas Publications books. If you get the Focus On series, you don't need them, but these books, they're spectacular. I will have them in my Crocs of the Day video because I've talked about them 700 million times. My free science curriculum, the best free science curriculum you're gonna get is Mr. Q's Science because I like it because it's condensed. Like you can get core knowledge of science, but again, I feel like, I feel like some curriculums put a lot of busy work in there. And I really like to get down to brass tacks and then do the busy work, busy work on things you love, right? Like birds, you know what I mean? Um, get a bird unit if you love birds and things like that. This Mr. Q's Life Sciences, it's free. It's for older kids and it is for everything you need to know. It's written by a high school teacher. So everything you need to know before you put your kid in high school. So the free one is the Life Sciences one. And the other ones are only $60 each and they're all downloadable. And I think it's, I don't know, that to me is affordable and the, what I've read through it so far is it's not a lot of wasted time. The experiments are spectacular because just like the Focus On series the, and the Focus On and the Building Block series, the experiments are so stuff you have in your house. And like, if you don't have one product, he's like, you can substitute with this product. And I just think that was really well thought out. And I really appreciate that. Favorite readers, hands down, is a Becca. 
You're talking $23 a book. You're talking each grade level. You, they got about five or six. And what I love, but they're thicker books and they have a bunch of stories in them. But take a look at this. Let's look. So this is, come on a ride with me. Come on a ride. Come over here. Look at this. This is 1C. So they're all labeled. That's what I love about a Becca's. Like if you look, everything is labeled one. So you know where it's going. So this is the stepping stone. So we're just gonna take a look at some of the stories. So in here, let's go back, do, do, do. Let's go to the beginning of a story, a random story. Read and think, so you got some words they're introducing to you. Oh, no, that's the last story. This is the next one. So you got words to watch for give, want, today, downtown, Sunday. Okay, and then you got the story. So these are level one. So usually kids are reading these on their own. And then you got the story. And then at the end, you got different questions. But the stories are interesting. They're interesting. Oh my gosh, they're so interesting. I'm telling you, I bought Sunlight's Reader. I bought everyone's readers. I go to the library every week and take out a million books. So I'm telling you, when I tell you that these stories are interesting, it is my favorite way to teach history. It is a Christian program, so if that bothers you, hey, don't get it, because every once in a while you're gonna run into a story, a factual story about like Jesus, and this was his life, and this is what he did. So for example, they have a whole book of growing up where Jesus did, and it's got a lot of information about what his life might have been like. But again, look at these, look at these books. So this is the 2E, flying through the skies. And so very interesting story. So again, usually what we're doing is we are, let's pick another story. I don't know, I guess we'll start here. Take care of the minutes. So that's a poem. They have a lot of poems in there as well. So it is $23, but I'm telling you, you get like 127 pages for everything. Okay, so it's got parts of a story. What It talks about parts of a story. So it's teaching you stuff through all of them and they're all labeled. So words to watch for it. And then it's got Blaze and the Forest Fire. They're interesting stories. Oh my gosh, I could not like them more. Okay, so so anyway, yeah, I love the Abeka ones. I love the Abeka ones. My favorite is one of the history ones in, I wanna say level three, they're talking about American history. It's just my favorite history program. Again, real pricey, but you can buy a lot of these used. You can buy a lot of them used. And you don't need, it's not like a specific program. Once you get up to two and three, you don't need like, it's not a program per se that you need yeah, they come with teacher's manuals and stuff, but you don't need it because it's got questions in there. At the end, it's got questions to answer. And I just, just interesting reading stories that helps them learn recall and vocab words. I could not like it more. This is their beginning reader, which is one three, which is, it's very simple too. So kind of cool, kind of cool. Okay. Now, Becca as a whole, I don't really care for because super pricey. Look, secrets and surprises. So it says secrets and surprises. So just, and they're really thick again, like this one, $23, it's 177, yeah, 77 pages, 78 pages. And that is the 1D. Okay, so let's see, what is up next? But again, oh, as I was saying, one of their books, and I can't find it because we were reading it and now I can't find it. Why can't I find all the books I was reading? Oh, I know, because I'm disorganized, because I got stuff everywhere. Oh, that's why, okay. All right, so. Let me talk about, oh yeah, but anyway, it deals from a first person point of view of the different, when the Native Americans met, like the people, the pilgrims, and it's just, I don't know, I just, little kids and what their lives were like. And it's just really interesting. I find it super interesting, my kids like it. It's not too scary that even my kindergartner, who's very sensitive, it's not too scary that even, cause I do them as read alouds. Language arts all in one, Common sense press. Language arts all in one, common sense press. Language arts generally do not have an all in one. Same with curriculums don't have an all in one. If I had to do an all in one curriculum and money's no object and you're not opposed to religion, go with, go with a Becca, okay? Um, but there, again, I just don't think you need all the elements for it in which to enjoy it. I have a very eclectic thing. I kind of want to get the best elements from this and that. My father's word as well, I have purchased. I haven't seen it yet. So it is not included in this, in this melee, is that a word, melee of options. But so all in one, generally language arts all in one, generally they don't have them because they're always missing literacy or they're missing vocab. 
they just can't do an all in one. It's hard, like they don't have grammar in them. The exception is Common Sense Press, which I am going through, I have been going through it, and it comes in a box and it's got everything you need to gently go over all that stuff. So same with grammar programs, I've ordered a couple cool grammar programs I haven't yet gotten to, but the grammar and all-in-one Common Sense Press. Common Sense Press was based on this book by, she was a home educator and her name is, her last name, I think her name is Dr. Ruth Beechick, and so I remember it. Now, what's interesting is that she is a Christian woman. She actually has, some of her stories are in Abeka's stories, but the Common Sense Press curriculum is not secular or Christian. It's just a curriculum that deals with language arts. Not free app. Yeah, it is a free app, but it's one of the best apps is Khan Academy. It is secular. Again, just because they don't mention God, I throw them in the secular. But what I stayed away from, because I don't want my kids doing a lot of like computer stuff, right? Like I want them learning with me, da da da. But what I've learned is I like to try it the other day. And I think it's great for like, hey, 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day. If they want to go longer, go ahead. Just in case I miss something. They just go through and play like these educational learning things about opposites, about different things that just in case I miss something or to reinforce some concepts I've already taught. And so that's why I like it and it's free. Okay, so let's get to things I don't care for. Out of all the programs I reviewed, Sunlight is my least favorite. I just find Sunlight Bookshark, they're the same. They're the same. You say what you want, but they're, they're the same company. So they have a lot of the same. Like I didn't care for their art program too much. Their stuff's all right, and I think if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But um, just out of everything I've seen, they're not my favorite. I will say they're kindergarten literacy, they're HBL. My kindergartner loved the loved their books, their book selections. Their grade one was not a winner. Either way, I'm not a huge fan of Sunlight. You know I do not like the busy work on the Sunlight Science. Oh my gosh, that's, that's out. That's, a no-go, hands down. Don't, I know. I feel kind of bad because if you like Sunlight, hey, cool, good for you. What I do like about Sunlight is they sent me this canvas tote because I ordered so much stuff. They were like, you get a free canvas tote. And I opened it and I was so arrogant. I was like, there's no way I'm using this canvas tote. Why do I need a canvas tote? Um, I use it all the time. I put all their school stuff in it, even though it's not Sunlight stuff, and I take it with me. It's a great bag. Like if I could just recommend purchasing that bag, like if you get an opportunity to get that bag, for free or whatever, it's cool. I mean, it's just a canvas. It's a thick, well-made canvas tote. It's not a cheap one, it's well-made. It's got pocket up front. I just love it, I use it all the time. <laughs> but I was so arrogant when I opened it. Like, my ego was like, huh, we're not using a sunlight thing or whatever. Boy, joke's on me. <laughs> now, overpriced curriculum would be a Becca. A Becca overpriced sunlight, a little overpriced, I guess, a little bit. Um, but uh, Abeka, definitely overpriced. If you have all the money in the world, go for it. Um, but it's a, you're talking like for kindergarten, $1,500. And like, I wouldn't pay the $1,500. So I was like, I'm just gonna get the kids' materials, see if I can muddle my way through it without the teacher's materials, because the teacher's materials were an extra 500. And then on top of that, if you want someone else to teach like the videos, so they can teach your kids the concepts, well, that's an extra 500 bucks each, essentially around that each thing. So I was like, you know, it's, Kindergarten, like I need someone else to teach me how to teach a kindergartner. Yeah, apparently I do. I'm a little overwhelmed when I got and I was like, I just spent 500 bucks on like four, which is, it's like this stack, this high. And it's like, well, shoot, what do I do now? What do I do now? Um, so there you go, that's what you have it. And then be naturally curious. I've reached out to them because maybe I didn't give them a fair shot. I purchased one of their units and there's a couple reasons I didn't like it. Is the secular curriculum. I didn't like it, not because it's secular, I don't care. I just didn't like it because it said, first of all, that it was literacy based, like not literacy based, that had a story through it. It didn't have a story, this particular unit, it just had a character, there's a difference. And then um, it had, I just found that you can get this information and a lot of information about what they covered and the activities on Pinterest and stuff like that. It just, and for the price I paid at the time, you paid like, I wanna say over $20 or something for it and you got seven pages of content. To me, that's just not enough to justify the price. And then the rest of the stuff are just pieces to a game. But then on top of that, what you get is, uh... so anyway, I reached out to them. I don't think they'll respond. They haven't yet to say, hey, yeah, you could try a different curriculum. But it was also cheaper on Amazon anyway. It was like $6 cheaper on Amazon. So not only did I have to pay for printing and print it off myself, but so it just irked me. So those are my least favorite curriculum. So I hope you had a good video today. I hope you enjoyed the day. 
And uh, I hope you tune in for my favorite products of the day. And now I have to start cleaning up this mess. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at all this. Those are past projects and things I'm reading through that I didn't put back in a box. And then there I got clothes I gotta fold. And sure, I totally ignored my bed today because we had to go to OT, like or speech, so we were out the door super early. And and then homeschooling and stuff. So by the time I was like, uh, like something's gotta give. Either I film a video or clean the house. So now I have to really get down and start making this somewhat livable. Okay, so anyway, tune in tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.